Hello everyone, Lytro Storm here, and today I've got a very interesting what if. This is what if Total Drama Island had no teams. This completely changes the entire game, so it's hard to work with, but I think I did it in a pretty satisfactory way. So what this entails is that basically there is a permanent merge, and because many of the early challenges involve teamwork, we have to kind of change some of them. Immunity early on would be given to many campers instead of just one, and obviously this changes the eliminations. So let's get into what the first challenge would look like, with no teams. So the first challenge is going to have to be tweaked just a little bit as I said before. The campers still have to jump off the cliff, but if you refuse to jump or don't land in the safe zone, you lose the challenge. The final part of the challenge is to take the items needed to the main campground and make a small swimming pool. I changed it from hot tubs because I think having 22 pool sets would be a lot more convenient. Plus, I don't think everyone could build an entire hot tub on their own. Everyone who succeeds at making a solid, usable pool gets immunity. The cap is half though, so we can only have 11 immunity winners, so the worst pools will fail. By the way, it might seem kind of stupid to have 11 immunity winners if there's no team, so only like one person should win immunity, like usual, but that really doesn't narrow things down. So for instance, it's really hard to tell how all 22 campers would vote amongst each other, especially when there's no big bad at certain times. Like early on, Heather's kind of annoying, but just because she didn't win the first time, does that mean literally that she just gets to get eliminated because she had a one in 22 chance of winning and she didn't? Like that just kind of makes things feel kind of redundant. Heather's just gonna get eliminated instantly. All the villains are gonna get eliminated instantly and then it's just gonna be lame. So I don't wanna do that. I think Figured, since 11 people won immunity in canon, we can have 11 people win immunity here, even if it's just single immunity. Alright, so with all that explained, let's talk about who loses this first challenge. To start, we've got Beth, Courtney, and DJ, who all didn't jump in the original episode. Next up is Heather, who didn't jump either and was thrown by Lashana. But because there's no teams, Lashana has no reason to force her to jump, so she fails along with Owen, who I think only jumped because everyone was cheering him on. But again, they wouldn't do that here, so he gives in to his fear and doesn't jump. The final loss in the first part is Justin, who didn't land in the safe zone. Everyone else jumped and landed, so they're all good to continue. You could argue Tyler kind of failed by landing on the safe zone border, but I'm not going to count him out just yet. So with 16 campers left to win their safety, they rush their pool supplies to the campground. Here, Katie and Sadie go off to pee, but end up squatting in Poison Oak, causing them to fail the pool building challenge because they're not going to have time to build it. Lindsay also fails to make a good one because she's not that smart. We need three more losers, so out of these guys, I think the bottom three would be Tyler, Ezekiel, and Bridget. Tyler and Ezekiel are just kind of dumb, not as dumb as Lindsay, usually, but out of everyone left, yeah. And Bridget is really clumsy in season one, that's kind of one of her main traits, so she might accidentally poke a hole in the pool or something, I don't know. So yeah, all three of these people lose the challenge, putting us down to our 11 immunity winners, which will be shown on screen now. That leaves these characters up on the chopping block and up for elimination tonight. And while Ezekiel won't say anything about the teams, he would probably wonder why so many girls won immunity while he lost. This then escalates to him offending all the girls and getting voted off. Yeah, sorry guys, Ezekiel's gone, sorry. The next challenge is the big sleep, which Gwen won originally, so that still happens. Of course, we'll take the top 10 who stayed up the longest. This is because technically we've got 21 campers, so I wanna go with the lower amount of the half. The top five were Gwen, Duncan, Eva, Heather, and Trent. They also show Courtney, Beth, and Lindsay being awake too. Justin was in the top 10 with his fake eyelid trick, but if he wins, no one really points out his tricks since he already won, it's too late. So he gets immunity by cheating, which is kind of cool for his character. The numbers say that the Bass had four members awake besides Duncan, Eva, and Courtney, but everyone they show on screen is asleep. We never actually see Bridget on screen in this part though, so I'm gonna say that she's the final winner. During the challenge, Heather is able to convince Lindsay and Beth to join an alliance and also steals Eva's MP3 player. But because Eva has immunity now, she's gonna hold on to it just to make Eva as insane as possible when she finally loses a challenge. Also, Heather wouldn't want Lindsay to like Tyler, even if there's no teams, as Tyler might influence Lindsay against her. Heather wants to isolate Lindsay and make her feel like this alliance is all she has. Anyway, we've got our 11 that can be voted off here, and I think it'd be a close vote, as none of these guys have really done anything wrong yet. 
However, Owen is probably viewed as annoying due to the naked sleepwalking and Heather doesn't like Katie and Sadie. But they could also be easy to manipulate, so she's gonna let them in on the alliance. Now that it's not restricted by teams, this alliance from Heather could actually be huge. I think the vote would come down to DJ, Owen, and Harold, since DJ is really strong so he's a threat, and Owen and Harold have both been a bit annoying. So for now, I'm gonna say Owen gets the majority vote and is taken out. The next challenge is the dodgeball challenge, which Duncan would be awake for since nobody had to stay up nearly as long. Getting to one final person takes a lot longer than 10. But now the dodgeball challenge is going to have everyone split into four teams of five. These teams will all compete against each other once, and the top two teams win invincibility. I know, technically I'm using teams here, but they're not official, they're just to make the challenge easier to imagine. Chris allows them to pick their own teams, but there's no switching. If you don't like the team you're on, you chose it. Also, let's not forget that Chris definitely does make teams in later challenges, even after the merge, so it can still be used. Anyway, here are our teams. Heather, Lindsay, Beth, Sadie, and Katie, because it's their alliance. Gwen, Lashana, Trent, Cody, and Noah. Obviously, Gwen, Trent, and Lashana are there. Cody kind of just wants to join in, and Noah really doesn't have anywhere else to go. Izzy, Bridget, Eva, Justin, and Harold. This is honestly just a hodgepodge of whatever characters were left because the last team, Duncan, Jeff, DJ, and Courtney, and Tyler, is pretty straightforward. I, it makes sense why all these characters would group up. But I'm gonna be real here, Heather's team is kinda awful. Nobody on that team has showed any really talent in this episode, so Heather's just using them to try and take shots for her. That team would just get body slammed by every other team, so they're not winning at all. Courtney and especially Tyler might hold Duncan's team back, but Duncan, Jeff, and DJ have crazy synergy this team. Plus, Duncan will just teach them the rush the new guy technique to go against the better teams. I genuinely see them making it as one of the immune groups this time. This leaves Gwen and Izzy's teams, which both have their own setbacks, Noah and Justin. But with the added context that Eva's been going insane without her MP3 player, she'd be a crazy obstacle. Bridget doesn't do anything in the canon episode, but she should be okay at dodgeball. I mean, the whole reason Duncan wanted to vote her out is because she's athletic and good at sports, so I mean, you know. However, they're up against a Gwen who isn't nerfed because she actually got an okay amount of sleep, Lashana who has proven she can contend with Eva later on in the show, Cody who has insane skills at dodgeball, and Trent, who should be okay as well. But before we decide who the last team with immunity should be, let's focus on the non-challenge related stuff. Lindsay and Tyler would head out together, and Heather would follow. Heather would be ticked that they had started flirting, but ultimately decides that she can work with this. She has her doubts since she can't use her girl power on Tyler, but once she sees how dumb he is, she thinks he'd be easy to manipulate too. And if he thinks everything he's doing is just best for Lindsay, then it should be simple to convince him to do her bidding. Anyway, during the final match between Gwen and Izzy's teams, Noah and Justin would get dropped quickly because, you know, they're just not doing anything. Eva avoids a shot, making it hit Izzy instead, and proceeds to bash Trent in the face with a ball. Cody pulls out his reverse ball trick to tag Bridget, and Eva quickly takes down Gwen. But just as Eva is about to unleash onto Cody and Lashana, Heather walks in and calls to Eva, saying that she found her MP3 player, and Eva gets really distracted, allowing Lashana to bust a ball across her skull. This leaves only Harold, who is about to catch Lashana's next throw, but Cody tosses a curveball, forcing Harold to dodge. However, dodging one ball doesn't save him from Lashana, and with that, Izzy's team is lost and will join Heather's at elimination. The votes are cast, and while some members of Izzy's team think Justin is to blame, since he was really bad at dodgeball and focused too much on his looks, everyone else thinks Eva is insane and way too strong especially the girls who have had to live in the same cabin where she screamed and threw stuff around to find her mp3 player. Also, the people on Gwen's team would probably vote for Noah, but he has immunity since he's on the winning team. So sadly, Eva gets the boot here. In Not Quite Famous, every cast member would have to show off a talent and the top 9 best ones get immunity. So let's go one by one and see what it would be. We should start with the people who actually did stuff in this episode. Justin does his performance and gets 6 points from Chef. DJ messes up the ribbon twirls, so he gets two points. You get the picture. Here's everyone's canon scores. Heather reading Gwen's diary wasn't counted up for some reason, so I have no idea what she got. Probably not very high though, but we'll see what all the others get before we evaluate it. Sadie and Katie ask Chris to do the challenge together, but he denies. They try to tell him that they can't do their talent without each other, so he says, okay, and a buzzer goes off. 
The two are disqualified from the challenge because they can't do it without each other. Jeff tries to do his skateboarding deal, but he ends up breaking it like he did in the show, so he gets a one because at least it was funny to see him fall. Beth would do the fire baton twirl and would probably half succeed, but end up lighting some stuff on fire. Chef likes it a little bit. After seeing Trent sing to Gwen and Justin flex his attractiveness, Cody scraps his original talent, which was probably something really good, and just starts trying to show off his own strength. But he doesn't have any, so he gets almost nothing. It'd be funny because knowing Cody, he probably had some real skills, but threw it away to be a simp. Heather reading out Gwen's diary leads to her leaving, so she misses her shot, giving her no points. Izzy would do the rattlesnake dance, but Chef would just be weirded out and give her a negative one. Tyler would show off his crazy grip strength somehow, impressing Chef a little bit. I think it'd be really funny if Duncan did exactly what Courtney said he would do this episode, carve a picture of his own skull into a tree. Chef is slightly impressed with this, but you know. While we're on the topic of Courtney, I think it'd be funny courtesy if Chris just played the video where Bridget dropped the light onto Courtney's head and Chef gave her some points for that wipeout. Lashana tries to dance, but she is very notorious for her bad dancing, so she gets low points. Lindsay shows off some fashion, but Chef doesn't really care, even though Chris heavily degrees. Chris overrides Chef's points to add a few more. Noah might pull up some funny stand-up comedy that makes Chef laugh, and with that, here are our nine immunity winners. Now for the elimination, it may seem like Heather would be an obvious boot, but I think she'd be pretty resourceful like she was canonically. She can't just throw the votes at Justin this time, but she's got a pretty big alliance and would probably be able to convince many people that Bridget has been terrible. Not only did she kill Courtney's violin and give her a concussion, she also barfed on everyone, causing more people to barf and just making a disgusting mess. So it'd be pretty easy to rally a lot of support to get rid of her. I think the vote might be close, but Heather definitely gets to stay with the strategy. The Sucky Outdoors sees our campers being forced to spend a night in the woods and return to camp in the morning. I think this challenge remains intact, but we'd see a lot of bonds start to form or even without the teams. This includes Duncan trying to form a guys alliance with Jeff and DJ as they've been pretty close so far. Tyler, Cody, Harold, and Noah end up stuck together in the woods with Noah being annoyed at how they're following him. But none of them wanna leave because they're all scared of being in the forest at night. They would try not to show it and flex how tough they are, but it's pretty obvious to the viewer that all of them are stumbling. It'd be funny to have a moment where maybe Noah and Harold have to pee and Tyler and Cody are like, wait, We'll go with you. Heather sticks with her alliance, but Sadie and Katie wander off after Justin, but he leaves them behind in a cave like he does in the Total Drama 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 Island special. Courtney wanders off alone, ending up bumping into Duncan in the woods while well, he's trying to find food. He brings her back to the guys, and this builds their relationship up. Gwen, Lashana, and Trent are balling together, actually making a camp together and chilling. Izzy is pretending to be a bear and scaring all the others at night. When daylight hits, Tyler, Cody, and Harold are relieved that they haven't run into any bears, but then Izzy shows up in a bear costume, scaring them all the way, including Noah. They run away, and Izzy chases after them until all five cross the finish line. This gives them immunity, and you'd see them all hug and jump up and down until they realize how they look doing this. Heather, Gwen, and Courtney are pretty set at heading back as soon as possible, so they do so. Courtney has to spend some time getting Duncan and the others up, though, so I think the last winners would be Heather, Gwen, Trent, and Lashana. Courtney gets mad at Duncan and the others for slowing her down, but Duncan just flirts with her in response. After Katie and Sadie make it back last, Heather demands to know what they were doing. They admit that they were following Justin, and Heather realizes just how much of a threat this guy may be if he continues to stick around. He's literally ruining her alliance by just existing, so she needs to take some action. She forces Sadie and Katie to vote off Justin to make up for their failures, and convinces Tyler that Justin might swoon Lindsay. As for Lindsay, her and Beth should be easy enough to convince. Without anyone else to rally against, besides maybe Katie and Sadie for being annoying, Justin would get the most votes and get tossed out. For the Phobia Factor episode, we can just see who all completed their stuff. Every person who faced their fear gets invincibility. Noah would probably have to face one of his life-threatening allergies that he mentions in episode one, but decides not to. By the end, only Lashana, Jeff, Harold, Cody, Tyler, and Courtney, and Noah are left to vote on. I think it would be torn between Tyler and Noah due to both of them being kind of annoying, but Noah is probably more disliked due to his snarky nature, and Heather could use this as a moment to gain more loyalty with Lindsay and Tyler. She's keeping Tyler in the game out of the kindness of her own heart. With that, Tyler goes on, and Noah gets eliminated a few episodes after his cannon boo. For Up the Creek, we'd have all the cast members be paired up in canoes. These would be the pairs, Gwen and Cody, Heather and Harold, Duncan and Courtney, Lashana and Izzy, 
Jeff and DJ, Sadie and Katie, Lindsay and Tyler, and Beth and Trent. After reaching Boney Island, the duos must make fires. After making one, they have to go back to Camp Wawanaqua. The first four pairs to arrive win invincibility. The only teams that have trouble making the fire are Sadie and Katie, maybe Gwen and Cody, as well as Lindsay and Tyler. Though Lindsay was able to start a fire instantly in action, so maybe she'd pull that off here as well. After talking with Gwen and Trent, Cody swaps out with Trent in order to get those two to get together. Though it'd probably be a different guy betting him that he couldn't get Gwen's bra. Harold burns his and Heather's oars to make the fire, leaving them with paddling to shore. Katie and Sadie are struggling to make the fire, so Heather steals their oars, sailing away with Harold. Izzy doesn't run her mouth to help anyone, since no one besides Katie and Sadie are left without oars. But based on how well Izzy did in the fire, in canon, they'd be long gone by then. From there, it doesn't really matter much who gets immunity, as Izzy still gets hunted down by the RCMP and forced to escape. Though now, Katie and Sadie don't really like Heather because of what she did to gain immunity, but that was kind of all for naught, so Heather just cut her alliance in half for no reason. The two try to dip from the alliance, but in the next episode, Heather has Lindsay find Katie and Sadie and talk to them. She hopes Lindsay can convince them to stay with the alliance, as they've all become friends. Anyway, we're now on the Paintball Deer Hunter Challenge, which just has the same people hunting as the original. But since we are missing two hunters, Bridget and Owen, I'll just add our two oddball characters in their place. So now, Tyler and Katie are hunters as well. If a hunter can land a shot on one deer, they win immunity. Any deer who survives unscathed also gets immunity. Because Lindsay and Katie are both hunters, she tries to talk to her first. Katie doesn't want to stay in the alliance at first, but Lindsay really puts in the work to convince her. They end up running into Sadie, who yells at them for trying to suggest that they stick with Heather after all she's done. She says that if Katie is gonna leave her for Heather, then she's just as bad. So, Katie shoots her. With the paintball gun, of course. This means both Katie and Sadie are out of play as now Sadie is eliminated and Katie wins immunity. Lindsay and Beth are forced to go retrieve food for Heather, which goes the same as it did in canon. Cody takes the chips, leading to him being mauled by a bear. Beth also shoots Heather, who steals Lindsay's gun and starts shooting back when Lashana shows up. But Beth has secured her immunity now by shooting a deer. These are the people who I also think get immunity by the end. Cody, Duncan, DJ, Courtney, and Lashana. And yes, Cody getting mauled doesn't count as a paintball shot, so he gets immunity here. It just means he'll be easier to take out later since he's injured heavily. So that leaves these guys on the block. Heather has Lindsay and Tyler helping her vote off Sadie, since she's betrayed the alliance and doesn't have immunity like Beth. She also tries to get Katie to vote with her. I could also imagine Heather getting Harold and Cody to vote off Sadie as well. But what would happen here is that the votes would be really close between Sadie and Heather, but Heather loses by one vote. Chris informs her that it would have been a tie, but Katie reveals that she couldn't vote for Sadie, even after all that had happened. She apologizes to Heather, but Chris reveals that tonight, the votes didn't matter. Cody is now too injured to feasibly continue. Now I know what you might be thinking, so I'm gonna address every possible point and give my explanation on why this is the right choice. Chris didn't eliminate Cody for his injury in canon, so why would he here? Well, in canon, there were teams, so if just one member of the team couldn't compete physically, it wasn't a huge deal. It would only hold the team back, so it's up to them to deal with it. And what did the Gophers do when Cody gets injured? They voted him off immediately. And in fact, the way that they show everyone voting is presented in a comedic way. Cody says, they'll never vote me off. And then Lashana chooses Cody despite her hatred for Heather, and Owen says Cody isn't useful. So it's extremely possible that Chris let the votes play out because Cody was going home anyway. And given that Chris did eliminate Cameron due to his injury after a merge in All-Stars, it adds even more credibility to this claim. But even if you don't think so, the fact that Cody is too injured to compete and most of the challenges are so low, since there are no teams, I think it'd be fair for Cody to be booted. Leaving him in just lets people keep him around because he's not a threat, which is kinda unfair. Question number two, didn't Cody win immunity? Yeah, but don't act like this is the most fair show ever. Lindsay gets auto-eliminated for second place, and Lashana gets voted off because a parrot says her name. And that's just in this one season, not even mentioning Max getting kicked off just because Chris didn't want the evil gimmick around, or Ella because she sang, despite her team winning. So I think all of these inconsistencies provide more than enough reason for Chris to let Cody go out here. But with that covered, now Heather has to deal with the fact that Katie, Sadie, and Beth have all left her alliance, leaving her with half as much power as she had before, but this time officially. We now move to the next episode, which is the cooking challenge. Here, Chris would have all of the contestants pair up with the best three dishes winning immunity. Here are the duos, Gwen and Trent, Duncan and Courtney, Sadie and Katie, Lashana and Beth, Lindsay and Tyler, Heather and Harold again, 
Jeff and DJ. Heather and Harold might seem like a strange pick, even though we just had them together, but Lashana doesn't know that Harold is her secret admirer yet, and she bonded with Beth a little bit last episode. So Heather would probably try to work her mind magic on Harold to replace some of her losses from the last episode in her alliance. I would imagine Heather sees how the guys bully Harold, so she ropes him in with talks of helping getting them off the island. He obviously really likes that, but he gets caught up in all the guys' memes, so he isn't able to put his all into the challenge. In terms of who would win, Lashana wouldn't have to cut any pineapples, and apparently she had really good cooking skills based on her own words, though then again, she also thinks she's good at dancing, but I think we could take her word for it. Beth didn't make any mistakes during this challenge, so I'd say the two of them have a pretty good shot at winning. Gwen and Trent together would probably be alright, this only leaves one team left. Sadie and Katie are still trying to get along after everything that happened. I mean, Katie not wanting to vote Sadie off doesn't fix all their issues. Lindsay and Tyler... No need for explanation. Harold is too busy with the underwear plotline, so Heather gets held back, as I said before. And sure, Duncan and Courtney are fighting, but Jeff and DJ are both taking time to mess with Harold, whereas Courtney isn't. So I'd imagine she would probably take the win for her duo here with help from Duncan. This leaves Heather, Harold, Lindsay, Tyler, Katie, Sadie, Jeff, and DJ on the chopping block. Now, these four want Heather gone. I could also see Trent voting her off too, so that makes five. Katie doesn't dislike Heather, so her vote could go anywhere, and Duncan and DJ and Jeff don't like Harold due to his underwear problem. Courtney hasn't really had too many bad interactions thus far, except for Tyler who sucked at dodgeball, so maybe she votes for him. It's also possible she votes off Heather, since she's just the most rude person on the island. So we've got a potential four to six votes for Heather here, and her alliance only has four people. So I think Heather only really has one choice here, and that's to cut Harold loose. If her, Lindsay, and Tyler vote for him, that's seven votes with Duncan, Jeff, and DJ. It costs her an ally, but it gets her to the next challenge where she has a chance to win immunity. So sadly, Harold takes a loss here for teaming up with Heather. Before going, he reveals he meant everything he wrote in the letters to Lashana, and they have the same moment as in canon. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention is that Beth never got her totem discovered, since the teams would probably just put her dish onto the table. They wouldn't be setting up extra decorations or anything. Now the next episode is Trust Challenge, which requires some sort of team effort, but there's no way to properly assemble our cast of 13 into equal groups. So since the next episode lost its main bite with Harold, I figured it's not a huge deal to just swap the two. That way we can have duos for the trust episode. This means we've got basic straining next. The first challenge was to hold up the canoes, which didn't end until one person quit. We've got Beth, Tyler, Sadie, and Katie here, who weren't canonically, and I could see any one of them besides Tyler and maybe Beth taking Lindsay's spot and dropping out. But I'm gonna say they don't, as it won't matter since they're probably not gonna win anyway. Trent and DJ still fall asleep for the essay part of the challenge, so they're out, but I think Tyler probably would too. Courtney would prevent Duncan from further aggravating Chef, but it would be more apparent that it's because she likes him, since she can't fall back on the I don't want our team to lose excuse. There are no teams. In the obstacle course, I think Beth would end up with the too much mud situation like Harold did, so she's out. Now we've just got one more person to take out before deciding our immunity winners. Heather, Jeff, Duncan, Courtney, and Gwen all made it in canon, but somehow Lashana couldn't complete the obstacle course in one minute, but Owen could. The same guy who got stuck in the tire and knocked over the wall due to his size. I don't know how he managed to overcome those issues, but apparently he did. So I'm gonna say Lashana still gets taken out since it seems like that's just a canon event. She lost to Owen. But Sadie manages to pull through and get immunity, unlike Katie. We don't have to do the hanging upside down part since we already have our winners. Duncan and Courtney go to Raid Chef's fridge after the events of the challenge are over and get together. During the hangout at the girls' cabin, Beth would mention that it's a shame her good luck charm didn't work in the challenge, with the others wondering what she's talking about. She then shows the totem that she found on Boney Island, which means she's cursed. And due to that superstition, all the girls vote her off. And with that, we have covered half of the first season of Total Drama, so I can conclude this part here. It's already super long and I don't want the video to be humongous, so part two will drop shortly after this one ideally. Let me know if you guys really enjoyed this series and you want to see more of What If Total Drama Island Had No Teams because that will definitely inspire me to get the next episode out sooner. And if you want to support the channel even more thoroughly, feel free to become a member. It's only $2.99 a month and you get access to awesome perks like exclusive community polls and posts and also videos early. So yeah, make sure to check that out if you're interested and you want to support the channel. But as always, tell me if you like this part, tell me what you think will happen next, comment your request for future videos, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, have a great day.